was bleeding so, I mean, he was bleeding bad. There was a trail all the way from the fence into our house. A Moorhead family stunned tonight after they say a neighbor's dog attacked them leaping across the fence to do it. Valley News Team's Reed Gregory spoke to the... Doesn't it look very bad that the man of the house is to do it? Is Valley News laid up. stunned tonight. The man of the house laid up in the hospital bed looking pitiful. The big brave protector, if he's in the home, then it's okay, it's safe. To have a bully breed in the home. This dog left this guy feeling like a five year old himself. After they say a neighbor's dog attacked them leaping across the fence to do it. Valley News Team's Reed Gregory spoke to the oh, family about leaping across the fence. The fence that's supposed to be there for other people's safety. That's supposed to keep the dog contained, mind you. About how they're handling the situation as well as their next steps. It's extreme surprise and shock, you know, why it happened. I don't know. Okay, let's not talk like that. Why it happened, I don't know. No, we all know why it happened. Stop playing dumb. Dogs are bloodthirsty, mentally deranged mutants that attack unprovoked every single day. That's what happened. No time to play dumb. Jacob Nelson and his family are trying to come to terms with what took place on August 12th. This is really like taking an emotional toll on him. Right? Taking an emotional toll, not just on him, but the whole family. Okay, he's the man of the house. He's the breadwinner. The whole family, the whole household is affected. Don't you think it's smart to sidestep situations like this to avoid going through what they're going through if you can in order to do that you have to practice sinophobia right now we're just kind of at a loss when a normal day of yard work turned into a race to the er after a neighbor's dog bit jacob in the face my husband's holding his face and he just said like is it bad what's going on and the guy said oh boy you need stitches just send me the bill so the dog owner looked at this man bleeding and he said oh boy you're gonna need stitches send me the bill you see i don't want to go through that and this is what the law sets up as if going through an experience like this is nothing you know how much of an inconvenience this is first of all you got to go to the hospital then you got to get stitched up. No telling how long you'll be there. Several hours. Then you're on medication. Suddenly, you're out of a whole bunch of money. You're out of work. Now your hours getting cut back. You could even lose your job. It would have been better had he been armed and protected himself from that dog. He wouldn't be injured. The family says since the attack, they've replayed the situation over and over and are just thankful that things didn't get any worse. We ended up calling 911. He collapsed in the in the kitchen, um, had soaked through an entire bath towel, basically. Um, we've so. actually banned the kids right now um, from coming out into the backyard. They banned the kids from going out into the backyard. That's sinophobia. When you actively Consciously avoid places where dogs are because the dogs are there. That's what they refer to as sinophobia, as you having a mental disorder. Okay, the biggest problem with this is that after people are attacked, they start to take natural precautions. It's instinct to avoid doing something that got you harmed. And they fight against that. And they do it on so many levels. Understand, the nurse is gonna be telling the parents and the child that they should not avoid dogs. Oh, that's sinophobia. Maybe even the doctor, okay? Your teachers, 
everybody the child talks to, everybody that the parent talks to. They're going to tell them that it's a mental problem to avoid dogs. That does not even make sense, people. You are supposed to avoid things that are deadly. If it was able to do that to my husband, I can't imagine what it would be able to do to a six-year-old. Now, here you go again, as if this is rare. As if it's rare. Imagine what it would be. Yard. As if it's rare for a child to be attacked. They're attacked most of the time. Let's stop with this, you know, language. With this uh, talk as if children being attacked by dogs is somehow unheard of. They talk as if it, oh, it only happens maybe once a year, once every two years. My goodness, people, wake up. It is so sad because this is a technological era. There shouldn't be this many people unaware. If it was able to do that to my husband, I can't imagine what it would be able to do to a six-year-old. Minnesota law statute. Now, look at what y'all see what that says. This was an unprovoked attack, as always. 7.22 states the dog's owner shall be liable for any attack. However, the Nelsons say they haven't heard from the neighbors since. Oh, be nice if they came to check on me. They know his road to recovery will be challenging and costly. It's going to be lost wages, all of the medical bills, plastic surgery. But they say they'll work through it. It's going to be tough. And this is what the lawmakers expect us to go through. They don't want you to shoot the dog. Even if the dog is attacking you, they want you to just stand there and take it. They never tell you to use a weapon to defend yourself or your family, which, again, is criminal. So I would rather defend myself. Put one, maybe even two, if I have to, inside of that worthless, good-for-nothing, worthless mutant. Okay? And... I'm not going to end up another statistic like this guy on top of everything else. He's now scarred for life. No dog valuable enough to inflict lifelong scars on a human being. Protect yourself. Protect your family.